Hi, this is uh, Dr. Rad Singh. I practice at Healer and Seven Heart Medical Spa in Las Vegas. Hair is a big part of our identity and might I add sexiness. A good set of hair is seen as a sign of good health and fertility. Today's video is about hair, why we lose them, what can we do to protect and maintain our scalp hair. Now there are hundreds of products available over the counter that claim hair growth. However, most of these are ineffective and actually may cause harm by delaying actual care. Now as we get old, some thinning of hair and shedding is a normal part of the aging process you know, as hair follicles are receiving less blood supply and of course fewer nutrients. However, you know, accelerated thinning of hair, you know, patches of hair loss or if your shower drain is you know, filled with hair. That could be a sign of uh, some underlying health issues with, you know, maybe net health, maybe nutrition and possible hormones. Let's start by looking at the hair follicles. In this image, you can see that the hair follicle has, you know, a four stages in their life cycle. 90% of the hair are in the growth phase or the anagen phase, which may last three to five years. You know, the rest of them is like, you know, keratogen, the resting phase. Now, the permanent hair loss almost always happens in the anagen or the growth phase. Hair follicles are very active. You know, they continue growing uh, through a phase of regeneration and degeneration with periods of rest in between. So, it's, it's a continuous cycle. It keeps going on. Let's look at different patterns of hair loss. As you can see in this picture, the pattern of hair loss is different for men and women. For men, the hair loss starts in, in the front and then kind of goes to the back in sort of an M-shaped pattern. It involves a crown eventually and then the rest of the scalp. However, for women, the hair loss starts in the middle and kind of spreads outward. So, very different pattern of hair loss. Now, in PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome, women may experience male pattern baldness, but generally it's from the inside kind of out. The genetics connection. Most of the hair loss in men is linked to genes, you know. Uh, so there are certain genes that make the hair follicle overly sensitive to dihydrotestosterone and also it could also increase you know conversion of dihydrotestosterone from you know to actual testosterone. Now that being said even if you have bad genetics you know the DHT conversion can be blocked with medication and hair loss can be prevented. So just because you have the, uh, the baldness gene that doesn't mean that hair cannot be protected. The stress connection. When we are under chronic stress, which leads to persistently elevated levels of cortisol, the end result is diversion of nutrients and blood supply away from the scalp as the body focuses more on survival and unfortunately hair is not considered essential for survival. Now this can be detected easily by doing a saliva cortisol level. I did post a video on stress and cortisol a few months back, uh, so please watch it for a better understanding of stress connection. Let's look at the thyroid connection. Both overactive and underactive thyroid can lead to significant hair loss. This can easily be detected by checking a TSH level or thyroid stimulating hormone. So here you can see a picture of a thyroid gland. It's a gland that's in our um, middle of our neck. It's quite common disease actually, thyroid and uh, hypo and hyperthyroidism. Let's look at the vitamin D connection. Now most of us are low in vitamin D as we spend more and more time indoors or our skin is covered either with clothes or with sunscreen which blocks production of vitamin D in the skin. Vitamin D helps by creating new hair follicles and also keeping the hair in the growth phase longer. So hair actually keep growing. Yeah. Now I live in Las Vegas and my vitamin D is low so please get yours checked. I have to take a supplement. The anemia connection. It's obvious that if you're anemic, your blood counts are low, your scalp and your hair follicles are getting less oxygen and less nutrients. So if your blood counts are low, hemoglobin is low, just by improving your hemoglobin, you can actually prevent hair loss. So that's an easy fix, you know, correct your anemia. I think one of the most important one is the hormone connection. Estrogen and progesterone, they play an important role in hair growth. After menopause, as the levels of estrogen and progesterone decline, hair loss is actually quite common. Elevated level of uh, testosterone in PCOS or polycystic ovary disease, it causes male pattern, ball, uh, male pattern hair loss in women. Men who are on testosterone replacement, 
lose a significant amount of hair unless they're also using a dihydrotestosterone blocker such as finasteride. So that's why you'll see if you know big athletes are you know using a, or bodybuilders using a lot of testosterone generally have no hair on the scalp. The medication connection, I think this is often overlooked. Uh, numerous prescriptions, they're linked with hair loss. Oral contraceptives are a big one. They disrupt our natural hormone balance. Naproxen and ibuprofen, they cause hair loss by decreasing blood supply to the scalp. Medications for depression, you know, gout, blood thinners such as warfarin or coumadin, acne medication like Accutane are you know, some of the medications, but there's just too many to list. So during evaluation for hair loss, it's very important to identify any of these possible medications, possible side effects which could be causing hair loss, and try to eliminate them by modifying medication and stopping unnecessary uh, medication. That's one of my uh, practice uh, philosophy is to eliminate unnecessary medication and try to repair the body from inside out. Treatments. There have been just so many treatments over the past 100 years or so. So we have been obsessed with hair for a long time. Now in the early 1900s, uh, now vacuums were used on the scalp in an attempt to pull the hair follicle out. Of course that didn't work. Then in the 20s, 1920s, electrically charged combs were introduced to stimulate hair follicle growth. They were highly ineffective. I was actually kind of surprised that I saw electrically charged combs back on the market. You can buy them online. Actually don't buy them because they are not effective. What else doesn't help? Acupuncture. While acupuncture can help certain medical conditions, there is absolutely no data suggesting that acupuncture helps with hair loss. So not recommended. Amla oil, also called as Indian gooseberry. I was born in India and it's a very popular oil for hair. Uh, so far again, no studies I could find that showed any benefit. So, in my opinion, you don't need to use amla oil. Uh, interesting one is washing hair with beer. So temporarily, yes, this will make the hair more soft as there's a lot of protein in the beer. So it's going to coat the hair follicles. They're going to look soft and silky. But it's a very temporary effect. It's not going to improve the health of your overall hair. So I don't think this should be done. I prefer drinking beer with my friends. I think it's more fun versus pouring it over my scalp. Now application of other oils such as coconut oil, almond oil, again, don't have much benefit. So what does help? You know, a multivitamin, a plant-based multivitamin can help restore the balance of vitamin D, provide some iron, zinc, and other minerals. Now please do remember that not all vitamins are created equal. You know, absolutely avoid cheap synthetic vitamins. Always look for plant-based multivitamins. They do cost a little extra, however, they're worth the expense. Okay, the other supplement is ginkgo biloba. It helps, uh, um, you know, hair follicles absorb nutrients, so can be taken. Standalone, doesn't work, but in combination, yes. Sao palmetto, it blocks dihydrotestosterone, which can be the cause of hair loss in some individuals. It's effective. L-arginine, it's an amino acid. It produces nitric oxide, or helps produce nitric oxide, which dilates blood vessels and brings more nutrients to the scalp. If your blood pressure is already low, I wouldn't recommend using L-arginine. Now let's look at medical treatments. So minoxidil drops. You know, minoxidil is effective as long as it's used on a regular basis. Main issue is not the medication but the absorption. As we get older, we don't absorb medications very well from our skin. So I prefer that medications I use are compounder medications. With some minoxidil, ketoconazole, vitamin E and certain other ingredients for better absorption and better results. I don't recommend finasteride, oral finasteride, due to sexual side effects. However, topical finasteride works actually really well by blocking 5-alpha reductase enzyme, which is responsible for converting testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. So it's, it's a good one, but not the oral, just the topical. Light therapy. Now, light therapies are effective in combination with other treatments. You do need medical grade equipment for these to be effective. Home devices are just too underpowered to have any benefit. So as you can see a patient of ours getting the, the red light session to keep his hair healthy. And I get this about once a month as well. About 15 minutes. Really helps my hair. Microneedling. Now this can be done with or without platelet rich plasma. If done properly, it's very effective at improving blood flow and nutrients to the scalp. It can be combined with platelet rich plasma or PRP. 
Now, microneedling, if done properly, can have amazing results. However, if not done properly, it can actually damage hair follicles. So ensure that the medical professional who is doing the microneedling has the expertise and the training for microneedling for, for the scalp, for, for hair treatments, basically. It's different um, used for the skin and, of course, differently for the, for the hair. Now, PRP or uh, platelet-rich plasma injection. Very effective if done using the proper equipment. So here you can see in this video, I'm injecting PRP into the scalp. Uh, now we use a nerve block, so the procedure is not painful. Right. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes. So in summary, you know, uh, there are very effective treatments actually available for maintaining and restoring hair, you know, before significant hair loss has already happened. Now results are better if treatments are started early for obvious reasons. You know, combination treatments produce better results than one particular standalone treatment. Do you have significant hair loss already? Are you worried about losing hair? You know, start treatments early, reduce stress in your life, sleep better, improve your nutritional status, reduce unnecessary medications, get evaluated by a physician, and start a good program to maintain and improve your hair. Now, I hope this was helpful. Please do like and subscribe. And also, please do share your feedback in the comments below. I read and reply to all the comments, so your feedback is very important for me. So that's it for uh, today. Thank you for spending time with me. I will see you back in a few days uh, with another topic. This is Dr. Rising from Las Vegas. I'll see you back. Bye-bye.